All right, if you would open your Bibles to Mark 13. Mark 13. Good to see some folks back. I know uh, uh, the Brother Hicks was telling me that they've had a virus going through the house. He goes, well, you didn't want us up here. I was like, okay. And then, of course, Miss Barbara, good to see you back from vacationing in Florida. Yeah, have a good time. Good. When you go to Florida, it's hard to leave. And I say that because their water is clear. Ours is chocolate milk. <laughs> May have the same type of weather, but that water makes all the difference over there. So, Now that you're in Mark chapter 13, I invite you to stand as we honor God with the reading of his word. Mark chapter 13, if you're able. Verse number 1. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, we see what matter of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the the mount of olives over against the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars... Be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourself, yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues, Ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought uh, beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you uh, premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now, the, now brother, the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and the children shall rise up uh, against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. Sound familiar? And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Let's pray. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we discuss these verses that Jesus is teaching and warning his disciples, Lord, I ask that you would help us this morning. Lord, I pray that we've prepared our hearts, our minds, Lord, to be focused this morning, to pay attention this morning to what you have to say, that, Lord, that we may be challenged and encouraged from thy word. Father, I ask that you would commune with us this morning that you would have your will in your way, for it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. And so we, we, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, several different things about what Jesus was teaching in the temple. And last Sunday we talked about, we kind of reviewed what the men had heard uh, and the going to the men's advance, and back in 13 this morning, uh, we, we, if you look at Mark chapter 13 and Matthew 24, and 
uh, other in other places of scripture about the end times. You know, that's always a conversation uh, in churches, and also in uh, if you look on social media, the time, the end days. Are we in the end days? We know we are, right? You know, and what's coming up next? Uh, all these eclipses that we're having and uh, all the different things that's going on. We see Russia and getting ready and all these one world order getting ready over in Europe and whatnot. And, uh, and we start talking about what's going to happen, about the rapture, how that it's imminent. We know it's imminent. It can happen at any time. And uh, what's going to happen? And we... And if you look at these chapters, I mean, the, if you look at them by themselves, you you think that, well, we're there already. Well, you know, that's one thing, the great thing we have, the whole counsel of God. And so in, in Mark chapter 13, uh, we're going to look at some things here. And when we're studying end times uh, in the Bible, and the message that it's being preached to or presented to, we need to, when we're studying and when we're hearing a message about those things, we need to consider who it's being brought to, right? The context. Context is everything, right? We don't want to take, we don't want to take anything out of context and make it and apply it where it doesn't belong. And so in Mark chapter 13, Jesus teaching these things, who is he teaching them to? The disciples, right? And so let's keep that in mind as he's teaching these things because of the things that he's teaching his disciples, they haven't seen yet. But we have. Right? So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, what does the message mean for the uh, immediate audi audience? And Jesus, the immediate audience, is the disciples. So... Here, we're going to start off in verses 1 through 4. Jesus pronounces that the temple of the temple's destruction. Now, as we see in verse 1, the disciples, as they're walking in Jerusalem, they're noticing the, the buildings in this temple, how wonderful and great it looks. Listen, and, and if you go into, I don't know about you, but when, when I go like to downtown Houston or any downtown area in a city, I like to walk around and look at the buildings. Uh, I'm fascinated with the different agriculture, the arch, not agriculture, but architecture that we, ha that we have in America. I mean, listen, if you go downtown some of these cities, you're going to see some nice-looking buildings, you know. And, of course, you go to California, they're going to be built totally different because of all the earthquakes that they have than we have here in Houston and, and in the tunnels. I remember I went, went to the tunnels in Houston one time. Uh, this was, of course, post-Harvey after it's all been... Uh, redone and it was really nice and uh, I love to see the, ar the architecture well that's what these disciples were doing they're walking through and they're seeing all these nice buildings in Jerusalem and, and they say Jesus look at what you do you see it do you see all these nice buildings and Jesus he pronounced the, the destruction of them uh, and so Jesus tells them Listen, as nice as this temple's going, it is. Now, remember, this is the second temple. The first one's been destroyed, right? This is the second one. Of course, there's going to be a third one that's going to be coming up, but this is, it's been destroyed. And the third one, the second one, he's like, as nice as it is, it's going to be destroyed. He says in verse 2, And Jesus answering said unto him, Since thou the, these great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So, the, listen, the destruction, the destruction of the temple begins not in 40 A.D. when it's destroyed, but it begins when Jesus is on the cross. What happens when Jesus dies? What's ripped from the top to the bottom? The veil. That is the beginning that is the beginning of the destruction of the temple. And it's not till 40 A.D. where the Romans come in and totally destroy the temple. So Jesus is telling them, listen, the temple, it's about to be destroyed. It's going to happen. All these, these buildings, these stones, they're all going to come to the ground. 
And so he, he teaches them and about that, and the disciples, uh, they're like, uh, Jesus, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, and they bring him aside and says, uh, you know, uh, it sure would be nice to know when this would happen. Right? That's, uh, that's us. So we'll, if, we, if we think about when, when something's about to happen, we want to know about it, don't we? It, it, it's crazy the amount of what's going on on Fred Hartman Bridge on We All Nosy. Everybody, if something happened last night, something was going on in Garth Road. What's going on on Garth Road? We all want to know what's happening. Right? And so uh, the disciples, they say, hey, Jesus, uh, can you kind of let us in? On what's, when all this is going to happen? And so Jesus prepares them. Jesus prepares them for what's to come. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, in, in, in Matthew's uh, version of this, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when, the, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they, they, they come, you know, in Matthew, as he's writing, he, the, he says that the disciples come and say, When are these things going to happen? When well, you're going to be coming back. And the end of the world. Because remember, in the minds of the disciples, they're thinking, okay, he's going to die. We know he's going to He's said he's going to die, but he's also going to be raised. So he's going to be coming back here pretty quickly. Because remember, I, all through Jesus' ministry, they've been thinking, uh, thinking about the Messiah coming and bringing them up and setting up his kingdom, right? We've discussed this many, many, many times. And so their thinking is, well, Jesus is going to die. He's going to come back soon, uh, you know, just in a few days. And then after that, a few days later, he's going to come back and all this is going to happen. So Jesus begins to prepare them for what's to come. And verse number 5. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Jesus warns about deceivers. Now we know in the, they even know in their own history of Israel that there's always been false prophets, right? They, they know there's always been false prophets. Well, Jesus here, there's always been false, false prophets, but he warns them about false teachers who claim that they're of Christ, but they're not. Listen, there are many today underneath the umbrella or the banner of Christianity, but they're not Christians at all. They're, they don't preach salvation through Jesus Christ. They may, that part of the salvation might be in there, but you also have to add other things to it. That's not Christianity. Sorry, Mormons are not Christians. Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians. Catholics will even tell you themselves, they are not Christians. There's a lot underneath the banner or the umbrella of Christianity that are not. And what Jesus is saying is the deception will be on a bigger scale. That's what he's saying here is he goes, take heed to yourselves that you're not deceived. There's going to be many out there that say that they are of Christ, that, they're, that they may even say that they are Christ, that they are the Messiah, or that they're of Christ, and they teach, the, uh, the, they say that they teach Christianity, but they are not so. Jesus says they're not, it's, it's not them. And you need to take heed for yourselves, to yourselves. They will deceive many. So he, he warns them about deceivers. And then he warns them about worldwide troubles and hostility. In verse number 7, And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be. So he, he brings them to the wars and rumors of wars. And, you know, there, there's, we, we know that in Israel there's always been war. They've always been attacked, right? I mean, they were in slavery, slavery for 70 years, and... Uh, and they're always going against battle. Well, uh, he's, he's saying, yes, there's going to be wars, but then there's going to be rumors of wars. He says, you need to prepare yourself for these. The, in verse number 7, 
when you hear about these wars, don't be what? Troubled. Listen, we're always here. There's, listen, there's always a war going on in our world right now, right? And we're always hearing about rumors of wars. Well, we're, we, we know of a, world, uh, a war that's going on right now, right, with uh, Russia and Ukraine. Well, there's a rumor of a war right now where China has surrounded Taiwan. Right? And so, so we're always going to have wars and rumors of wars. Jesus is telling his disciples, don't be troubled. Don't trouble yourself with these things. And, and so uh, even though Israel's had all kinds of wars, he's telling them, when you hear these war, uh, wars and rumors of wars, don't trouble yourselves. He goes, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. I mean, there's, there's, there's earthquakes in Oklahoma. There's, I mean, there's going to be earthquakes everywhere. We've heard about earthquakes being in places that normally they're not on earthquakes. The earthquakes don't happen, right? Uh, so there's in different places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of, what's that word? Sorrows. He's telling them of the future. See, after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, the disciples' lives were about to get a lot harder. He says, these are the beginning of sorrows. The, what does the Bible, uh, there's something that happens to us today when it talks about sorrows, pains. Ladies, what's the, most, what's the worst pain you go through? Childbirth, right? Well, Jesus here is telling them this is the beginning of a growing pain because when Jesus dies, what happens? He's, he's starting the first church now, right? But when he dies and he's buried and he rises again, the church gets their gas. And you know what happens in the book of Acts, right? Birthing pains happens. He goes, this is the beginning of sorrows. He goes, uh, he, he's saying, I'm telling you, he's telling them, listen, it's going to get worse. It's going to get bad. It's going to get worse. This is the beginning of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves. For they shall deliver you up into to councils. And in the synagogues uh, ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and the kings uh, for my sake and for a testimony against them. So he, he, he's letting them, he's warning them about their future. He's preparing them for things to come. He goes, listen, you think that it's bad now. You, you think that... The way the Pharisees are treating me, it's about to be on you. Now think about this. The things that, that Jesus is saying and teaching the disciples here, you and I might, see, uh, might not see a lot of it, but listen, you know every 18 months there's an eclipse on the other side of the world? And so, and so when we're looking and we're studying the end times, Listen, these things don't apply to us as Americans. We're looking at the context of who he's talking to, right? And so Jesus, as he's bringing these to light, he's telling his disciples about what's going to happen. And listen, in America, do we, I've never heard of a, pr a pastor bringing up somebody in front of the, the synagogue or the church to beat them, to whoop them because of their testimony of Christ. I, listen, I've never heard of anybody being brought to Capitol Hill because of their testimony of Christ and, and being beat to almost death. Have you? Now, I'm not saying we don't have persecution in America. We do. It's differently. But you know what's happening across the world. This is happening all the time. Listen, I, I think I just heard, I was reading this week that there's some churches in India who's being set on fire and houses are being, pastors' houses and believers' houses are being burned. Listen, I, I'm not just saying like this. Is, listen, this is all in the Middle East, in Asia, everywhere. Does this happen today here, over here? 
No, we don't hear about somebody setting a fire on a church because of their testimony of Christ. We might hear of somebody going in the wrong neighborhood, sharing the gospel, getting beat up by a gang. But not, not, not in Jesus saying, bringing you in front of councils or in front of the synagogues to beat you uh, uh, for my name's sake. That's, not, that's what Jesus is saying. This doesn't happen over here. And he's telling the disciples, listen, this is going to happen to you. He goes, and the gospel must first be published among all nations, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you, what you, uh, what shall, or what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak but the Holy Ghost. He's saying, listen, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to come, and he's going to uh, come upon you, so when you are delivered, you're going to testify against them on my behalf. Because he says it is a testimony against them. And he's saying, listen, what's going to happen here in a little bit when I die and I ascend up to heaven, listen, this, things are going to get worse. Jesus was preparing them for the things that they are about to experience. So Jesus here, as, he's, as we see as, as signs, signs of the times, Jesus is preparing them. You always, you'll always hear believers, are we in the end times? What's going to happen? Or is it, what's about to happen? Is a rapture about to happen? Yes, it's, listen, the rapture is about to happen ever since Jesus uh, went to heaven. It's, the, the rapture is in, imminent, right? So what are we as believers today in, the, in 2023, what are we to take away from Mark chapter 13? Well, the last days began at the resurrection of Christ. We've been in the, listen, the last days have been going on since Jesus ascended into heaven. Jesus was letting the disciples know that the last days were on their way. And he's wanting them to know that the beginning of sorrows and the birthing of the pains of the church are about to happen. If you look at in, in chapters in chapter 13, verses 5 through 13, basically describes things that's going to happen during the church age. All these things, uh, even verse 12, Now the brother shall betray brother and de uh, to death, and the father and the son and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Listen, in America, who's the number one hated people? In America. Us. And especially us if you're a fundamental believer. If you hold to the fundamentals of the Bible and what it teaches, you're the most hated. Now, those who are a little liberal, who go out drinking in the bars with everybody else, they're not so much hated. Why? Because they're participating in the world, in the world but, and what they're doing. But no, those of us who are fundamentalists, who are fundamental Christians, we're the most hated people group in America. Why? They hate us for his sake. And so Jesus says, listen, in verses 5 through 13, this, this, these are things that's happening in the church age and going to ha continue to happen now and until the rapture. And then, of course, verse 14, between 13 and 14, you'll have the rapture. In chapter 13, between verses 13 and 14, the rapture happens. And then uh, after verse uh, uh, 25, between 25 and 26, you have the second coming of Christ. So what, what, how, what, what does Mark chapter 13 and these verses 5 through 13 have to do with us? Well, perilous times are coming. Well, Paul told us in 2 uh, Timothy 3, 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. That's now. Perilous times have been, uh, have been here since the ascension of Jesus Christ. Jesus' point is that the last days are coming and that the disciples and us need to know to keep our focus. He wants us and his disciples to know, trouble not yourselves. Keep your focus on who? Him. A lot of times these world events happen, we take our focus off of him and focus on, every, on the other things of this world, don't we? 
We'll, we will see these wars and these rumors of wars. We'll see uh, uh, the, uh, we, we're all, we're, a lot of people are worried about this digital currency that's about to happen, which is going to put every, uh, all of us in America. That's gonna, it, listen, it's going to put us back in depression days. Trouble not yourselves, right? Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus, what happened to him? He fell and he sank, right? So Jesus here, he's telling these the disciples, trouble not yourselves. You need to be prepared. These things are going to happen, and, and you need to keep your focus on me is what he's saying. These, listen, these world events that he's te teaching in, in Matthew 13, or Ma uh, Mark 13, Matthew 24, uh, Luke 21, these things, listen, these things are not to cause fear. It is for the world. Right? These things are to cause fear in the world, but to us as believers, these things are not to cause fear. But instead, these events, these things that happen, should motivate us. In what? Well, what am I supposed to be motivated in, Brother Mark? In sharing the gospel of Christ. These things are not to cause, cause fear in our lives for us to fret and to worry about what's going to happen to us. No, no, no. It ought to motivate us to get the Word of God out to every single person we can to sh share with them. Listen, these things are happening. Why? Because Jesus, listen, listen, the, the rapture's about to happen. And listen, uh, how a lot of people are about to be called up into heaven. And listen, the, the tribulation's about to happen. And let me, you don't want to go through that, so it ought to motivate you and I in sharing the gospel. That's what G Jesus is letting them know. These things are not to trouble, your, trouble not yourselves. Don't fear, but instead motivate yourself. Be motivated that, listen, it's going to get worse. So if it's going to get worse, then we need to be motivated in declaring the gospel. Because Jesus says, listen, look at verse 13. You're going to be hated from, of all men for my name's sake, but look at this. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He's saying, listen, there's going to be a lot of people with these world events that's going to happen. They're going to leave the faith. Listen, there's a lot of things that cause people to walk away from the faith. There's things that happen to us indirectly. Maybe that we are not the ones of the cause of it. But there are, and there's also going to be things that happen because of our actions. People, listen, people walk away from the faith because they get divorced. I've seen it. I know of people that's done that. I've seen people walk away from the faith because of... A pastor, or because, because they were hurt at a church. Now I, I'm not saying that it, uh, being hurt from a church is not it's not it, it's not it's not serious. But if you if McDonald's gets your order wrong and gives you something you don't want, you you still go back, don't you? Yeah, that's a freebie for you. No, but listen, no, no, Jesus, he's saying, listen, those who endure, those who continue to believe despite the valleys and everything that comes to them, those that continue that to, to keep the faith, they're the ones who are saved. He's saying there's going to be those that say that they're saved, and they're not, they're not because they're not enduring. Folks, these things are not to cause us to walk away. In fact, they are to motivate us and to keep going, to keep going. That's what these Jesus is telling these disciples. Folks, we're going to face them times. It's going to get worse. But trouble not yourselves. Listen, if you watch the news every day, you're going to be troubled. 
aren't you? You watch the news or you even listen to podcasts about what's going on. Listen, it, it can take those those things can take your eyes off of Jesus like that. But trouble not yourselves on these things. Jesus is saying, endure, keep the faith. Vance Havner says this, faith that fizzles before the finish was faulty from the first. So you want to know a telltale sign if someone's saved? If they endure, they keep the faith. When I, I hear about this, I think of folks who've really gone through it. Think of Brother Priest who lost two wives to cancer. He's still here. Anybody else in here has lost two spouses to cancer or, or something like that? Are you Brother Steve and Miss Deb losing their daughter? There's others. Miss Ruth le uh, losing her husband. We've all gone through some things, haven't we? Some have gone through some things that may be considered worse than others. But folks, don't let these things trouble yourselves. It's going to get bad. It's going to get worse. Keep your focus on him and endure. Did Jesus stop? at the high priest's house when he's getting beaten, when hair is being ripped out of his face, when the cat of nine tails is being wrapped around him in flesh, being pulled from his body and his guts hanging out? Did he, he say, I'm done? Did he, when those stakes were going through his wrists and his feet and the, light, the, the, the human life of blood being poured out of his body, did he say, I'm done? No, he went all the way for you and I, right? Endure. If Jesus went all the way, listen, he, was a, he had a human body. He felt exactly the same things you and I would felt. His body endured endure exactly what our bodies, it, it, it's the same, same human body. And he finished. He endured, did he not? Endure. It's going to get worse. And as we continue to study chapter 13, we're going to study the things about uh, what's going to happen during the rapture and after the rapture and the second coming and all these things. Don't let your faith fizzle. Because if you do, it's a pretty good chance you didn't have it to begin with. Endure to the end. What do you mean? Is that what does that mean? Endure to the end. Endure until you have no more breath. Keep the faith, Father. As we.